Hello everyone, thanks for coming. In this talk, I will tell you about what performance optimal means for read-only transactions, one that is and isn't possible, and a new design that provides it with the lowest possible latency and the highest possible throughput. Distributed stored systems are a fundamental building block of large-scale web services, where user data are sharded across many stored servers. There is also a set of front-end machines, we call them the web tier. They receive requests from users or some upper-layer applications, and then generate internal sub-requests to the servers that have the data. Real-world workloads are dominated by reads. For instance, Facebook reports 99.8% of the operations in their TAL system are reads. Google reports three orders of magnitude more read-only transactions than read-write transactions in F1 workloads. So reads are important. Their performance has a large impact on the performance of the overall system. However, simple reads are insufficient in a distributed setting. For instance, when Mia checks out her friend Jack's page, she needs to check if they are still friends, and the answer is yes. Suppose at the same time, Jack unfriends Mia and then uploads a new page that is only visible to his friends. After Jack's updates, Mia's read page request arrives at the server and returns the new page. Because Mia's two reads arrive at different servers at different times, these simple reads cannot prevent Mia from seeing Jack's new page. Therefore, we need read-only transactions. Read-only transactions coordinate a consistent view across shards. However, this coordination normally comes with overhead and makes read-only transactions have higher latency and a lower throughput than simple reads. As we know, real workloads are dominated by reads, so it is crucial to minimize the coordination overhead incurred by read-only transactions. The goal of this work is to make read-only transactions have best possible performance, meaning the performance that is as close as possible to simple reads. To achieve this goal, we answer three questions. First, what are the properties that precisely capture the optimal performance of read-only transactions? Second, when is it possible for read-only transactions to achieve the optimal performance? Finally, how can we design performance-optimal read-only transactions? To answer the first question, we look into the factors that influence the performance of read-only transactions. Factors like the type of hardware, network, and the engineering techniques like batching, these are engineering factors. They equally impact simple reads and the read-only transactions built on top of these simple reads. We abstract the engineering factors because they do not help us identify the performance difference between read-only transactions and simple reads. Instead, we look into the algorithmic properties that capture the coordination incurred by read-only transactions. Since engineering factors are orthogonal to the algorithmic properties we care about, our results can be applied to systems with different engineering factors. To identify these properties, we examined the coordination mechanisms used in existing systems. There are three commonly used algorithmic properties. The first algorithmic property is blocking. Some read-only transaction algorithms block reads, such as those that use locks. The second algorithmic property is using extra messages. Some read-only transaction algorithms read multiple times until they are able to find a consistent view across shards. The third algorithmic property is metadata. Some read-only transaction algorithms use metadata to help find a consistent view, for instance, using timestamps. It is these algorithmic properties that capture the coordination overhead of read-only transactions, because they are required by read-only transactions to find a consistent view and are not necessary for simple reads. Thus, it is by reasoning about these properties that we can say what performance optimal means. They capture the overhead due to the read-only transaction algorithm. 
we thus define performance optimal read only transactions to be those that have the least of these sources of overhead. More precisely, we say performance optimal read only transactions are those that match the N, O, and C properties that capture the lowest possible overhead for each of these mechanisms. I will now explain N, O, and C. The N property captures the minimum possible blocking, no blocking at all. Read only transactions are non blocking if they do not wait on external events like locks or timeouts. Non blocking read only transactions have better performance than those that block. They have lower latency because they avoid any time spent blocking. They have higher throughput because they avoid the CPU overhead of context switching. The O property captures the minimum possible extra messages, no extra messages. It requires that read-only transactions use only one round of unpassed messages. This disallows other messages that are unpassed for read-only transactions, such as retries. It also disallows off-passed messages, which are those that are only required for reads but lie off their critical paths. One round read-only transactions have better performance than those with more messages. They have lower latency because they avoid any time spent sending, receiving, and waiting on extra unpassed messages. They have higher throughput because they avoid the CPU overhead of processing extra messages. The C property captures the minimum possible amount of metadata, constant metadata. The C property requires that the size of the metadata per read remains constant, meaning it cannot increase with the size of the system, the size of transactions, or the number of concurrent operations. Read-only transactions with constant metadata have better performance than those with more metadata. They have higher throughput because they avoid the CPU overhead of processing extra data. The NOC properties capture the least coordination overhead for read-only transactions and thus bring them as close as possible to simple reads. They use non-blocking messages that complete in one round with constant metadata. Thus, we can now precisely say that read-only transactions are performance optimal if they have all three of these algorithmic properties. Now we would like to answer the second question. When is it possible for read-only transactions to achieve optimal performance? Ideally, it would be possible with the strongest consistency because stronger consistency makes writing application code easier. So besides NOC, we now introduce the S property, which means strict serializability, the strongest consistency. Strict serializability requires a total order among all transactions, and the total order respects the real-time order. For instance, Jack has Mia as a friend and uploads a new page. If his updates are done before Mia tries to read Jack's page, then Jack's updates are in real-time before Mia's reads. Strict serializability guarantees that Mia is able to see Jack's new page. Ideally, we want read-only transactions to be both performance optimal and provide the strongest consistency. However, we have proved the Knox theorem, which says no read-only transactions can achieve the N, O, C, and S properties at the same time. Thus, there is a fundamental trade-off in the design of read-only transactions. They can either be performance optimal or provide strict serializability. To understand why Knox is impossible, we can think of the system as a history of committed rights. As time goes on, earlier rights have committed and their states are finalized, while recent rights are not finalized yet. Their requests could be on the way from the client to the server. So the system history can be separated into two parts. The stable region only consists of finalized rights. Reading in the stable region does not need coordination since system states are finalized and there's nothing uncertain for reads. In contrast, unfinalized writes construct the unstable region, 
where reads could be uncertain about what to return since system states are not finalized yet. So they must coordinate to find a final consistent state. We proved that the real-time order requirement of strict serializability forces read-only transactions to read in the unstable region so they may encounter unfinalized writes. To figure out the final state, the reads either need extra messages to query what are the final states of these writes, which violates the O property. They could block themselves until the states are final, which violates the N property, or use extra metadata to figure out all the writes they are uncertain about, which violates the C property. Therefore, it is impossible for read-only transactions to be performance optimal with strict serializability. We proved strict serializability is impossible for performance optimal read-only transactions. But there are many consistency models in between strict serializability and weak consistency. Existing performance optimal designs only provide weak consistency. For instance, MySQL cluster provides read committed that does not isolate transactions. Thus we asked, can we have performance optimal read-only transactions with consistency close to strict serializability? The answer is yes. Next, I will introduce our new design of port that provides process-ordered serializability, the strongest consistency to date. Process-ordered serializability is slightly weaker than strict serializability. It also requires a total order, but does not have the real-time order requirement. It's equivalent to sequential consistency with transactional isolation. The design insight of port is to make read-only transactions read at a stable frontier whenever possible. The stable frontier is the most recent snapshot in the stable region a client is aware of. Reading at a stable frontier is coordination free and thus optimal performance is possible. Central to port is a type of logical clock specialized for distributed stored systems. Virgin clocks take into account the different semantics of reads and writes and thus open new opportunities for optimizations. They enable performance optimal read-only transactions by capturing the stable frontier. Now I will briefly explain some basics in port. Port is built on a multi-versioning data store. For instance, key A stores multiple versions, AX, AY, and AZ. Version clocks are installed on both client and servers. In this talk, I will focus on their logic on the client. The values of a version clock are version steps, which are used to index the versions of each key. To write key A with a new value AY, the client first advances its version clock by one to ensure the new write is ordered after all writes this client has observed. The version stamp is embedded in the write request, and the server will commit the new value at the index 2 at specified per the version stamp. To read a data item, the client does not need to advance its version clock. The server returns the value indexed at the version stamp specified in the read request. If the requested version does not exist, we use a technique called read promotion to promote the nearest version to ensure a total order. For instance, version 0 is logically copied to version 1 and 2, and then is returned to the client. By doing so, we make version 1 and 2 immutable to future writes. For instance, after read promotion, version 0 to 2 have been marked immutable. If another client, say Mia, tries to write at version 2, 
that the server will find the next available slot, which is 3, to commit this new write, instead of overwriting AX. By doing so, a total order is ensured. Port tracks the stable frontier by piggybacking the highest version number on the responses of the requests. The client keeps track of the highest version number of each server. The minimum across all version numbers is the stable frontier. The client uses the stable frontier to serve the next read-only transaction. For a read-only transaction, the client embeds the version stamp in all read requests. Each server returns the version at the requested version stamp. This guarantees that the client receives values across different shards at the same version stamp, which constructs a consistent view. Reading in the stable region and promoting reads ensure reads are non-blocking. Reading at a predetermined snapshot guarantees one round of communication. Each read request only requires one version stamp, which is a single integer, and thus satisfies constant metadata. We implemented the port algorithm on top of ScalarDB, which is a non-transactional system. The new system Scalar Port has performance-optimal read-only transactions and provides process-ordered serializability. We chose ScalarDB because it's highly optimized and very efficient, and thus is highly sensitive to additional overhead caused by adding transactions to it. We chose such a difficult baseline to strengthen our claim on performance-optimal read-only transactions. We also designed a variant of Port that supports write transactions by applying a technique called per-client ordering to ensure write isolation. We implemented the protocol on top of Iger. Iger is a causally consistent system that has existing read-only and write transactions. Its read-only transaction algorithm is non-blocking, but does not have the O and C properties, and thus is suboptimal. The new system Iger port makes the read-only transactions performance optimal. This talk only covers port and its implementation scalar port. We evaluate the scalar port to understand the overhead it adds to simple reads and its performance compared to other protocols like OCC. We use the YCSP benchmark and control the parameters for skew and read-to-write ratios. We evaluated latency, throughput, scalability, and data freshness. This figure shows the system throughput on the x-axis and the average read latency on the y-axis when we increase the load on the servers. Distributed OCC is widely used in real systems and is considered to have good performance under low contention compared to other transactional protocols. However, if we compare OCC's performance to simple reads, under uniform workloads that have 5% writes. The performance difference is large. Now let's look at our scalar port. Its performance almost exactly matches simple reads. And clearly, scalar port outperforms OCC. This figure shows the latency and throughput under skilled workloads with 5% writes. Even under highly contented workloads, scalar port closely matches the performance of simple reads. In the worst case, scalar port incurs less than 8% overhead in both latency and throughput. Scalar port significantly outperforms OCC under high contention because OCC abort and retries read-only transactions. To conclude, this work studies making read-only transactions have performance as close as possible to simple reads. We use the NO and C properties to answer what it means for read-only transactions to be performance optimal. We proved the Knox theorem, which answers the question when it is and is not possible to achieve the optimal performance. We introduced port as an example that shows how to design performance optimal read-only transactions with the strongest consistency to date. We showed a scalar port that has a minimum performance overhead compared to simple reads 
and significantly outperforms OCC. That's all I have for this talk. Thank you.